T900X, which has become the world's fastest single CPU on HW Bot, thanks to an overclock of a astounding 6 GHz on liquid nitrogen. We'll get into that first. And then we're going to move over to AMD and Vega. Specifically, some information we haven't actually covered quite yet. Uh, this revolves around drivers and other technology uh, to do with the card. And to be honest, it's just been something that a couple of people have been messaging me, so I thought I might as well just roll it all into one video. With all of that said, well, let's just jump into it. The first news story we're going to tackle is the i9-7900X, because it's the quickest of the two. Now, what do you get when you run this CPU at 6.01 GHz, thanks to liberal quantities of liquid nitrogen? Well, the user by the name of Sophos1990 is able to tell us this. It is capable of breaking HW bot records, that's what it's capable of. With a astounding score of 12,189.52. And this means it's a joint record because A, it's the first, um, sorry, it's the highest ever 10 core score. And secondly, it's also the highest score for a single processor. So there are actually higher scores than this if you take a look at their database, but those are multiple processor entries, in other words, multiple. CPUs socketed onto the same motherboard, whereas this is not, it's a single CPU package, of course. Now, obviously, this is not something that everyone and their mother is going to be able to run at home, because at the end of the day, it's running a vCore of 1.6 volts. So, this combined with liquid nitrogen, which means it's running at 110 C below, means you're able to achieve some pretty spectacular scores. I know some people don't really like me talking about liquid nitrogen and overclocking records and that type of stuff, but personally I think it's kind of cool, if you excuse the pun, to see what these architectures can really do if there is no such thing as heat as a limitation, or, you know, voltages. Right, now we're going to move over to Vega. Specifically, we have a couple of Vega stories which people have asked me to cover or have messaged me on Facebook but they didn't really seem big enough to cover by themselves, but I decided just to kind of combine them into this one video. So P PC Perspective actually did do a review, of course, of the Frontier Edition of Vega, but their results obviously put the card between a GTX 1070 and slightly above a GTX 1080. Now, they also managed to grab a second card, those crazy crazy people and the results are even stranger and basically demonstrates quite quite convincingly that the drivers are definitely not optimized particularly when it comes to multi gpu so in terms of resolution and gain well i'll show the video cards.com summary because i feel that they kind of just really make it easy to understand in a quite nice graph but basically you're looking at a 12 to 84 percent gain in other words, there's an absolute massive gulf between, you know, the worst performance difference from going crossfire and the best possible scenario. Uh, the best possible scenario is GTA 5 and the Witcher 3, where we definitely see quite large performance gains, especially at, of course, 4K. So I'm going to go ahead and say it one more time, definitely 110%. If you're thinking of buying two of these, even one card, but definitely two, do wait for reviews to pop out first. The next thing I want to discuss is the game mode on the Frontier Edition cards. So there are a lot of questions right now regarding this, and honestly, I don't have all of the answers. For those who don't know, Frontier Edition has two modes. The first is a professional mode, which supposedly is mostly for, let's say, 3ds Max, um, if you want to do perhaps 3D rendering, video editing, that type of thing. And the other one is, well, for gaming. So there are a couple of tests being conducted already, but perhaps one of the most infamous at the moment that's doing the rounds is from Gamers Nexus. I'll link it in the video description. Now, to give you an example, um, the AMD Vega Frontier Edition game mode uh, with Fire Strike at 4K, it's getting about 25.5, um, whereas on the other hand, the Pro mode is getting, wait, 25.5, that's a bit strange, right? 
and these results can be seen echoed through multiple game benchmarks at the moment. For example, you can see For Honor, which is receiving 40.7. Uh, this is at 4K Extreme, so not exactly, you know, bringing the CPU into the equation. Or 40.3 in the gaming mode. In other words, basically identical. Even The Last Light, Metro The Last Light, at 1080p, 133 frames a second, 133 frames a second with the Pro, and 132.7, so basically identical, you know, 0.3 frames a second when you're well over 100 doesn't really mean anything for the gaming mode. Honestly, it's very difficult for us to make any full conclusions at the moment because quite frankly a there's not enough of these cards in the wild b there's not enough tests conducted and c we also don't have rx vega as a point of comparison and d uh, perhaps the most logical of all we don't know what the state of the drivers are i don't actually have a frontier edition card so i can't make these tests myself so if you are still thinking of buying a frontier edition card i'd suggest doing a lot of research on this Basically, some people are saying that it's primarily for doing games development. That's what Pro Mode is for. It's not really for performance improvements. Whereas others are saying that that's not actually the case. Personally, um, and this is mostly focused on the drivers, the more that I'm reading, the more that I'm looking at this card, the more I believe that the optimizations for the drivers are probably going to push it to just above a GTX 1080 on launch. I might be wrong, it might be a little bit faster, might be a little bit slower, but I'm going to say slightly above a 1080, maybe, you know, 5-10%, something like that, and maybe subsequent driver revisions will push it even slightly higher. I don't think it's ever going to quite peak at the GTX 1080 tire levels. I might be wrong, and frankly, I would be very happy if I was, because that would be great, that would mean that AMD have another card, so really... It's just kind of a waiting game at the moment. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. You might have actually noticed I appear in it. Woo! -woo. Um, whole reason for that actually is because, well, I'm kind of testing it for A and for B. I don't know if you can see that in the back. I think maybe, he says. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But anyway, I'm um, doing some benchmarking at the moment um, of the X299. So the camera happened to just be set up. I thought I'd be like, hey, I'm on the camera. Or something. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, hi. Right. Um, so that test is currently being done at the moment. The 7820X is in it, I think. Yes, the 7820X, because I got sent two, C uh, two CPUs. Bloody hell, I can't speak suddenly. The other one being up here somewhere. There we go. That's the 7900X. So hopefully, I'm going to put a couple of videos together. One actually facing off the 7820X against the Ryzen 7. And then the other video... Um, will be mostly the review focused one of course with the 7900x and really tackling the platform and so on but with all of that said i think that's enough talking i'll see you soon take care bye for now